I don't care if you hate supercars or you hate the idea of being flashy or excessive consumption, look at this car on your screen and tell me it isn't a thing of utter wonder and beauty, because it is. Let's drop it down a cog and give it some beads. Yes! <laughs> Oh, that's quite terrifying. Let's take this back to Subsonic before our Bobby Brown my trousers. I suspect all this spray is actually giving my Lamborghini a bit of a soft focus look. It's another great 80s effect, really. It's poster art. Probably looks a little bit like a gentle porn film. I'm off to some tryst somewhere. Everything about the Countach was quite a bit more exciting than the equivalent bit in your dad's car. The engine in this one is a 5.2-litre V12, developing 455 horsepower. That is actually quite a lot. Two-litre Granada had something like 100 horsepower. There. There have been other amazing cars since, but I'm not sure anything has ever seen quite so modern and quite so stunning as the Countach. It still looks modern now. The engine was behind you, and it had two radiators fed with air by scoops apparently from a fighter aircraft. The rear tires were the fattest ever fitted to a car. The doors opened upwards like something out of Back to the Future. The seat sported Miami Beach six-packs, and it had that wing, which was supposedly to stop it taking off. It was unbelievably exotic, and we were weak at the knees at the thought of it. Now, at last, I'm in one, and it is terrible. It's an old car now. It's also a supercar, so it's not very good round town, but then supercars aren't, are they? It does about 15 miles to the gallon, which is terrible, but I suppose Rod Stewart wasn't really interested in the price of petrol. The cold, hard, grown-up reality of it is, unless you do happen to live on the sun-kissed shores of California, then owning one of these things is utterly, hopelessly impractical. Sorry, Harry. The visibility is very poor. The seats are uncomfortable. The windows only open a couple of inches, look. And the interior was designed by a man who loaded some instruments and switches into a blunderbuss and then fired it at the fascia. The engine is not, as it would be on a modern Lamborghini, fuel-injected. It's fed by six twin-choke carburettors, and that effectively means it has a carburettor per cylinder. And setting that lot up to run smoothly is a bit like trying to synchronise 12 mopeds. 